All right, guys, this is problem number four, Monk and Fredo. Sometimes these problems are going to get a little challenging. But, you know, even in life, sometimes you'll be facing some really hard decisions, but you're going to have to soldier on. So let's have a look at this problem and see if we can't solve it. Monk and Fredo. This is all filler right here. The problem really starts from this para. You're given two weights of A and B units. In how many different ways? Can you achieve a weight of D units using only the given weights? Any of the given weights can be used any number of times. So let's have a look at the test cases. 2, 3, 7. In how many ways can you combine 2 and 3 in order to get 7? If I use two twos and one 3, I get 4 plus 3. 4 plus 3 gives me a sum of 7. And that's the only way I can combine all of these. That's why that output is one. There's only one way. There's only one possibility. Four, 10, six. In how many ways can I combine four and 10 to get six? Obviously I can't use a weight of 10 to get six. So you've got to use only the four. But how many ever fours you put together, you're never going to get six, which is why the output is zero. Six, 14, zero. If I use zero sixes, zero 14s, I get zero. So I've got one possibility. And finally, two, three, six. If I use two, 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 I get six. If I use three, three, I get six. So there are two possibilities. Now, first, in order to solve this problem, we've got to realize that modulos work in cycles. Say I give you a number zero and ask you to mod it with three, the result will be zero. Now I tell you, keep adding one and try to notice a pattern. What are you going to notice? What pattern will emerge? 0 mod 3 gives us 0. 1 mod 3 gives us 1. 2 mod 3 gives us 2. 3 mod 3 gives us 0. 4 mod 3 gives us 1. 5 mod 3 gives us 2 and so on. Here there's a pattern. There's a cycle that keeps repeating. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. In every interval of 3, the same cycle repeats. It, and it doesn't just work if I add 1. Let's say I add 2. 0 mod 3 gives us 0, 2 mod 3 gives us 2, 4 mod 3 gives us 1. And then we get 0, 2, 1 again. Here the pattern is 0, 2, 1, which keeps repeating after a cycle of 3. Say I ask you to add 3, we get a pattern of 0, 0, 0, 0. So 0 is the cycle. The cycle consists of only one number, which repeats every single iteration. How are we going to use this to solve our problem? Let's assume this is our problem. We've got the weights 3 and 4, and we've got to combine them to make 80. If we convert it into an equation, it's just 3x plus 4y equals 80. We have to find all the possible values of x and y. We can also write this as 3x equals 80 minus 4y. This is where the cyclicity of modulo really helps. For this equation to be valid, the right-hand side has to be divisible by 3. That's when we can use two integers, one integer for x, one integer for y, and combine them to get 80. Say y is 0. In that case, the right-hand side becomes 80, and 80 is not divisible by 3. The closest multiple is 78, so the remainder will be 2. This means that we cannot use y equals 0 in order to solve this problem. If y equals 1, what will the remainder be? 80 minus 4. 80 minus 4 is 76. The closest multiple of 3 is 75. The remainder is 1. It's not perfectly divisible, so we move on. The moment y equals 2, the right-hand side becomes 72. And that's when it becomes divisible by 3. The remainder becomes 0. We're going to mark this position because it's going to indicate the starting point. When y becomes 3, our remainder is going to be 2 again. And it's at this point that we encounter a cycle. That's because we've already seen a two before. So we stop our iterations right here. We know the cycle length is three and we know our starting point is going to be 72. This tells us that from 72 or y equals two, we can keep incrementing y in steps of three. When y equals two, x is gonna be divisible by three. Similarly, when y equals five, that's two plus three, x is gonna be divisible by three. And this continues for y equals 8, that's 5 plus 3, y equals 11, that's 8 plus 3, and so on, until we reach a value 
that's just less than 80. In other words, we start from 72 and we continuously subtract 4 into 3. In other words, the greater weight into the cycle length in order to get a list of all the possible results. The total number of results will be nothing but 72 by 4 into 3 plus 1. The plus 1 is in order to include 72. In general, it's going to be D divided by the greater weight times the cycle length. There is one case we've got to take special care of. Let's say these are our weights, 9 and 3, and our result is 20. If y is 0, our remainder is 2. If y is 1, our remainder is 8. If y is 2, our remainder is 5. But when y is 3, we encounter a cycle. The remainder is 2 again. The cycle is 2, 5, 8, 2, 5, 8, 2, 5, 8. There's never a zero in this cycle. When we have a cycle without any zero, that means there's no possible combination of X and Y that we can combine in order to get D, 20 in this case. First, we take A, B, and D. That's our input. We find which of the two weights is the maximum and the minimum. Now, if D is equal to zero, the output is naturally one. That means we take zero A's and zero B's. We combine them to get zero. If the smallest weight is greater than D, so let's say we've got to combine 10 and 11 to get four. It's not possible. Even the smallest weight is greater than D. That's why we just return zero straight away. If one weight is greater than D and one weight is less than D, what do we do? Say we've got to combine four and 10 in order to get eight. We can't use the 10 weight. It's just too heavy. So we only focus on the four. If that eight, if D is a multiple of four, then we can put together a certain number of fours to get D. However, if it's not a multiple of D, then regardless of how many fours we use, it will never achieve D. That's why we print one only if D is a multiple of the smaller weight. If it's not, we print zero. The last condition is if they're both less than D. Count is going to be used to find the length of the cycle. The moment we encounter an element more than once, this while loop will break out. Now, C of zero is the only important value. That's because that gives us the starting point. All of the other values are irrelevant. Once this while loop is done, if zero is not there in C, that means we've encountered a complete cycle and no element was divisible by the smaller element. That's why we simply print zero. If that's not true, then we have encountered a zero. That zero will be our starting position. And our result will simply be starting position divided by the bigger element times the cycle length plus one. Let's compile this and test it. Samples passed and submit. has been accepted.